Yeah, it's good to see you. Thanks for having me. So I'm looking week to date, right? Down 3% is the sector. Uh, over one month, it's down about three and two thirds percent. Is that trade in trouble? Yeah, I would say it is. Um, you know, we, we came into the year pretty bullish on oil. I think that when you go back to how we came into the year, everybody was basically pessimistic. And our view was that we could get up to 90 bucks a barrel by the end of Q1. But we did think that was a soft ceiling. And uh, it was one of those rare times where the market did exactly what we thought it would do. So we got up to like 90, topped at 92. And then we looked around and everybody had kind of piled onto the trade. If you go, if you listen to the the kind of the average generalist that, that comes on your show, energy becomes a very consensus call around the beginning of April. And we saw that in the data, in the futures data. And we also saw that in the expectations for the OPEC meeting. So we, that brings us into the last weekend's OPEC meeting, where everybody expected OPEC to, OPEC to continue supporting the market. And our view is that any wobble in this OPEC uh, supply cut that they came, they did two of them last year, one in April and one in November, any wobble there was going to be really negative for crude oil. And that's what we saw. So the, the cartel came back and said, we're going to add oil starting in October of this year, 200,000 barrels a day. They increased baseline production for some of the other countries, UAE, Russia, Nigeria. And uh, the market has basically puked out on that. And I, I think there's going to be persistent weakness um, for the rest of the year, probably. I think mm -hmm. we've seen the crude oil for this year. Well, I mean, it's there's not a like the most direct correlation necessarily between what crude is doing as a commodity and then what energy stocks are doing as individual names, right? I mean, you look at crude at 75, there are probably a lot of energy companies within the markets here that are printing money at 75. Yeah, no, I mean, and you also have to look at, there's a huge component of the, the energy sector, if you're just talking about like the XLE or whatever, that's refiners. So that's, they're, they're playing a spread game anyway. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy like a Marathon Petroleum or something like that, just based on your crude oil outlook. You have to have an outlook on the refining margins. And so I, I, get, with, I get what you're saying there. And I also like energy within a balanced equity portfolio as some kind of hedge, because you never know what's going to happen. I could be wrong. Geopolitical things could happen that could cause oil to spike and that's negative for stocks and bonds and so energy does things in your portfolio that nothing else does but if you're asking me on a standalone basis anything with a really strong oil beta i think is going to be is going to suffer on a standalone basis going forward at least until we get a lot of pessimism back into this market get everybody back on the other side of the on the bearish side of the boat i see here that your base case is a broadening out of, of stocks why so Okay, so I, I think that your last guest in you, you had a good conversation about this. And, and honestly, it's really the most important factor in the broad market right now. So the base case, so we've had a really strange breadth divergence. And we've had a few of these. If you go back to last year, we had one in May, we had one in November, and now we're getting one again. And, and the reason we, you have to give, I think, the benefit of the doubt to the trend that's in place, which has been these mega caps run and then the rest of the market catches up. We saw that last year a couple times, and that's the setup right now. But I think it's important to recognize that when these things happen, so specifically when you see the S&P 500 make a new high, if the equal weighted S&P 500 doesn't confirm within 90 days, that's a very bad thing for the market. And so far, that's where we're at. We had the S&P 500 make a new high on May 15th, and still equal weight S&P is like 3% off its highs that it made back at the end of March. And so the clock is ticking. You have basically till April, August 15th, based on our analysis, for the rest of the market to broaden out. That brings the Fed into play next week. I think that's going to be a huge, huge issue and something that's going to really decide whether this market broadens or falls apart mm. because of a weak breath.